So this evening we <coughs> did the uh, funeral chanting for George Sharp. Um, it's one of those kind of passings that uh, were like a passing of an era, because he was the uh, the person who <coughs> invited. Ajahn Chah and Ajahn Sumedho to, to uh, England uh, to establish the Sangha. He was in, there in England. He was the president of the English Sangha Trust <coughs> at that time and uh, was involved for, uh, of course, for many, many years. And uh, you know, he stepped down from <coughs> the, uh, the Trust, but he was always involved with the with the community there and <coughs> he was about the same age as as uh, Lupa Sumedho also <coughs> hearing from Ajahn Soko and then hearing from uh, others um, <coughs> Uh, he just uh, passed very uh, brightly, uh, quite uh, uh, present and and uh, um, yeah, comforting his son as he as he's passing, um, and uh, uh, Joseph Capel had talked with him. <coughs> the uh, yeah, the day before he passed, because he got his diagnosis. And uh, uh, Joseph was saying that he was, you know, it was just great conversation. They, they were in pretty regular contact. <coughs> Said, yeah, George was very, um, really bright, really happy, uh, very upbeat. Um, so it's an exemplary way of facing. It's like yesterday, Ajahn, last night, Ajahn Yannikos uh, talk is emphasizing the importance of <coughs> recollecting these fundamental truths. Uh, and uh, <coughs> And there's just a, a difference when, when, when somebody really internalizes truth and faces it, uh, and when, when they're, um, it's kind of left unresolved or pushed away or hidden, uh, hidden from view. We would all, we'd like th things to be hidden from view. We just want to see what we would. <coughs> um, how we, uh, uh, how things would be in our fantasy world, but uh, <clears throat> that's the whole point of the Buddha's teachings: is to give us a, a window uh, into truth, into the, uh, and that's the, uh, <clears throat> the the idiom, um, <clears throat> that is used to kind of denote the. Uh, kind of insight into truth and libera lib uh, a liberating truth, liberating insight. Yatha uh, Buddha Jnana Dasana, knowledge and vision of the way things truly are. Uh, so that just that willingness to keep reflecting and looking and oh, this is the way things truly are. And uh, as things become clear. <clears throat> then there's a there's a, a release um, and uh, and the ease uh, of heart. <clears throat> Something else that has got my <clears throat> reflections going is uh, yesterday. I uh, 
took a, started, started to take a look at uh, Ajahn Sujito's new book, Breathing Like the Buddha. Uh, I, I mean, I haven't, I've hardly made a dent on it, but it, uh, <coughs> I highly recommend it. The, uh, <coughs> it's a, uh, a book that Ajahn Sujito wrote on uh, mindfulness of breathing. <coughs> He said he, it started out as an essay and of course turned into a book, <laughs> and which is as is the, uh, the way things are. But something, something so fundamental to our practice a, uh, is that mindfulness of breathing. Because it really does cover every aspect of our practice. Or we can use it in all aspects of our practice. <coughs> Um, from calming and settling to, to insight. But, but also that, I think one of the things that, that is important to reflect on is that, <clears throat> say like mindfulness of breathing, from a Buddhist perspective, it's not just a meditation technique that stands alone. Um, for, say, mindfulness of breathing, or for any meditation technique, uh, to <coughs> to truly be efficacious, um, it re requires a a grounding in uh, in our virtue and integrity, um, you know, and a uh, 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 an attention to fundamental goodness, uh, an attention to um, the qualities of 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 heart, like uh, say the spiritual qualities, spiritual faculties of generosity, of kindness, of compassion. Um, as well as the, say, the ability or the willingness to focus attention and, and reflect with wisdom. Um, so that uh, when the Buddha gives the instruction for mindfulness of breathing, um, that it's that encouragement to you know, sitting upright uh, is both a, of course it's a physical posture, uh, but it's also a mental, emotional posture. Just being upright, being uh, really present. Um, and and that, uh, uh, that sense of, of approaching our meditation with some oomph behind it, some, some uh, uh, in the same way that one, say, yeah, again, one physically one sits upright and is willing to, uh, to not just slump and, and melt into the moment. Uh, there's a, there's an, that one carries an uprightness of, of heart with one. Um, because of that um, commitment to 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 integrity, to to uh, to, to, to real wholesomeness, um, there's a brightness of heart that we want to be uh, able to carry with us, and that's that's where all practice is an ongoing thing. It's not just uh, from time to time, I sit down and count my breaths or something and, and uh, uh, that, that's my spiritual practice or that meditation uh, can't undo uh, uh, say uh, obsession with with, with uh, um, over uh, say over obsession with worry or or or, or 
kind of a, a mind that's obsessed with, with, with vengeance or something, I'm really going to get that person. Uh, that, you can't really, you know, you've got to be willing to turn to the, the yeah, qualities of, of kindness and, and, uh, and empathy. Uh, so these, these work together. That, go, uh, that um, you know, mindfulness of breathing, of course, is a foundational technique, but it's also the technique of m- mental training that the, that the Buddha m- gave the most, now, as well as uh, for he himself saying that that was <clears throat> what he, he himself practiced. Uh, uh, the most, and so I'd say, uh, it's got, yeah, it's got good street creds. Uh, so the uh, one of the things that uh, I appreciate, I, uh, of course, uh, Jin Sujito starts uh, the book more or less uh, with a uh, kind of a retranslation of the the. Uh, uh, in his own idiom of the uh, um, uh, of the sutta, and there's some um, some import, important again ref- uh, bases of reflection there, because he trims down the trims down the personal pronouns, uh, uh, and and that's really useful because really in the Pali um, uh, it, it, it's much more verb forms. I'm not, I'm not a Pali scholar but but looking at it uh, and yeah these are it's all mostly say verb forms and mental qualities that are uh, uh, spoken about alluded to as opposed to uh, that you know, filled with with the statements of me doing this, I I get I having to accomplish that. Uh, it's more around that that, that you know, system. Um, and and he he brings it back to I'd say one uh, say one breeze in. Um, Short breathing in long, or one knows, um, and from the you know this this the breathing process, um, but really even even that it's just this just like knowing thus, breathing in long. Breathe. You know, there is a long breath. Breathing long is a short breath. Uh, it is. It, it doesn't have to be personalized, um, and of course, that's very radical, because you know, certainly for most of us, you know, it's all about me. We sit here and we get it's me and me and my thoughts, me and my me and my my my, my body, me and my kind of feelings could go here and there. Uh, me and my wandering mind, uh, and, uh, and you know, it becomes a, a kind of a struggle and a fight. But it really helps to to cast that in that light of you know we're we're engaging in uh, uh, in processes, uh, in actions, in, the, in that sense of, um, and, and then the of course those first. Two step, two stages are uh, are, uh, are about the long breath, the short breath, and but then and, and just that fundamental knowing, and then the rest of the the sutta is is cast in the frame of training, sikati, and yeah, training us, breathing. And they say, as say, as one breathes in, and that sense of of uh, experiencing, uh, fully sensitive to the bodily formations, um, 
the uh, <clears throat> just the, the the process or the whole body itself uh, sensitive to experiencing uh, fully sensitive to I mean there's, there's these these are, are are verbs that are 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 one can engage in that activity and not get entangled in the whole um, yeah, self-project of where one is, um, you know, how am I doing today? And was just scoring oneself. Gosh, I'm not very peaceful today. I wasn't as peaceful as yesterday. Uh, you know, and, 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 it, and it's, it's that, that uh, that's what's tiring about human existence, this, this constant uh, nattering of me. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, having that that opportunity to to uh, to step back uh, and engage in that, that that process of of attending to the to the breath, attending to the body, uh, experiencing the the whole body, calming, settling. And uh, the 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 body, and that's the say the beginning is because it it really uh, it's so so helpful to to get get at ease with being in the body, being being a body, um, <clears throat> and and then. Uh, one of the things that that is I inevitable when you know for for the uh, <clears throat> instructions that the Buddha gives, um, just the nature of language is you have to say one thing after another. But you know the the, the reality is, uh, say as we practice, uh, say the purpose of the calming and settling and mindfulness and attention uh, is to uh, to have insight into its into its nature um, so to that those instructions that the the sutta that uh, instructions that the Buddha gives are are um, structured with the body First, then, say feelings, um, uh, mind, and then dhammas or mental qualities, mental phenomena. But those say, those mental phenomena can be one can be applying that at any time in the whole process, and it's even though it's sort of at the end. It's it's something that is is uh, important to be because sometimes we, you know well I don't know about anybody else's mind but I tend to I tend to plod sometimes I start I start here and I go there and uh, uh, and then you, know, you start with using reflections on the uh, the uh, uh, mindfulness of breathing, uh, using the sutta, and sort of lift up a, a contemplation uh, with that, that those themes in mind. And you get to the end of the meditation, and I, yeah, I haven't got very far in the sutta, <laughs> to walking along, walking through it. Uh, so, but it, I think it's important to have that flexibility of mind that 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 picks it up and brings it back and reflects. And, and that's the, the, those last uh, uh, aspects of the, 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 the discourse on mindfulness and breathing, uh, on dhammas, the, uh, the foundations of insight, um, is, it's called anupasana, uh, anu, and and anupasati, uh, and and that uh, it's like 
um, usually it's translated as contemplating. Um, it uh, can uh, another uh, a translation is observing, and and uh, Ajahn Sujito, I think it does a, a, <coughs> a translation gives gives that a translation that I found quite refreshing. I haven't seen come across. He's a witnessing, which is a really I think it's a really helpful way of. Okay, witnessing uh, uh, anicca anupasana um, is uh, witnessing impermanence or witnessing changeability, witnessing uncertainty. Uh, as I'm breathing in, witnessing uncertainty, breathing in, witnessing change. Uh, breathing in, witnessing impermanence. This is the, however, the texture of anicca uh, stands out to one. That, uh, that, that, that uh, as one's breathing in, as one's breathing out, uh, that attending to that sense of, of change, and that, that sense of, 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 uh, 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 Uncertainty, unsure, uh, rising and falling. Um, and so that there's a, that, because that's really a foundational aspect of, say, insight that leads to r relinquishment. Um, and you know, it's a part of the aspect of, because the, uh, the, the, The say the, the second aspect of uh, of these aspects of uh, dhammas of the the fourth tetrad uh, in that sutta is a uh, uh, vilaga anupasana uh, and that's a um, sense of dispassion and sense of dispassion cooling um, and. And it's when we see and, and, and witness this changeability, this uncertainty, um, sense of um, nothing's really a, a sure thing. Uh, there is this uh, arising and ceasing constantly taking place. And there's a cooling. Uh, and uh, and a, uh, a dispassion, and it's not that one doesn't feel anything, um, but there is a there's a clarity to that 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 settling of kind of because we get excited in in both ways we get excited about dreading something is going to take place. We get excited about how good something's going to be. And, and, but to have a coolness of heart, to just see really clearly, and that's, uh, it's grounded in the body, it's grounded in understanding, feeling, emotion, mental formations. It's grounded in understanding the the way the heart moves and shifts, and, and uh, it both its potential for for peace and stability, as well as its potential for for confusion and chaos. But then it's seeing it in the light of 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 say of truth of, of the way things are, and so that uh, uh, that seeing witnessing through that lens of, of anicca, of impermanence, of changeability, and then encouraging the mind towards a sense of, of, uh, of cooling, of dispassion. <clears throat> uh, 
a settling uh, taking place. And the, the, uh, uh, and that cooling and settling kind of matures uh, in, a, in that sense of nirodha, there, and that's the third aspect, nirodha nupasana. Um, uh, uh, and that is a, a, uh, um, I mean it's a really interesting word because it normally it, it's you know, cessation, um, is a, a very uh, common translation. But it's also, there is a, a, a tendency to approach cessation as kind of a, like an ending, a cutting off, or, you know, one has to chase things down to make them end. And, and, and that, uh, you know, we can get really busy with, with cessation and you think well that well that's not the purpose of the of the uh, of the, of the practice or the or the teaching and then and, and and this is something that uh, um, pointed out um, by a, a Thai monk in a, in a scholar uh, and practitioner um, a proper Yuto is that an equally uh, valid translation of the word niloda is is non-arising. So we can pay attention to the non-arising of say non-arising of dukkha, that's it. that's an interesting one. Rather than going around looking at all the uh, dukkha and trying to trying to try and make it end or or looking uh, paying attention to the non-arising of Desire, clinging. You say, well, well, before it's, it, it manifests, there is a non-arising. You think, well, that's a really interesting perspective. That's a really interesting angle to be attentive to. Uh, say, the non can we pay attention to the non-arising of confusion? I mean, what would that be? Uh, non-arising of, of restlessness or or yeah or of greed desire and you realize that before anything arises there is a stillness there it's already still it's already settled it's just that we buy into the arising we buy into the become the whole sense of self and me um, and there we really invest in that arising. We get really excited about me being something or other, um, and and to recognize that, well, yeah, underneath that there's a there there is a non arising There is a road and yes, I mean it's uh, a valid translation of cessation. And sometimes it's helpful to pay attention to that. Cessation, because uh, sometimes we're we are experiencing, say, an, either an interest or a drive or a uh, or an irritation and uh, or a fear, uh, kind of a worry, and then we can we can watch it, pay attention to it, and allow it to cease, and we can be conscious. We can know that we can witness that. But then we can also be a witness to the non-arising, and, and and both of the, they complement each other. Uh, so it's a really interesting aspect of investigation that that allows the heart to really become expansive, um, and it's in that expansive quality that the last, say, the last section of of. Uh, the, and the last quality that the Buddha points to, patinesa karpasana. As patinesaka is is a relinquishment, uh, a relinquishing, a willingness to relinquish. Um, you know, because we'll, I mean, we'll desperately 
cling to our miserableness just because, God, if I'm not that, what am I? Oh dear. <laughs> so it's a, uh, um, and just the recognizing that oh, everything has to be given up anyway. Can't really hang on to anything. Um, there's a, uh, um, an idiom that the Buddha uses, a phrase that the Buddha uses, that said it's a, a summary of the whole teaching. And if one sees this, one sees the whole teaching. If one sees this, one sees the whole practice. Sabbe dhamma nala nabini vaisaya. Say, nothing whatsoever should be clung to. So that's that, that sense of, yeah, nothing whatsoever should be clung to. Everything, uh, everything goes, everything, everything can, needs to be relinquished. And to you know, take a delight in that relinquishing, that letting go. Because that's where our, kind of our, 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 our real, ease and, and peace and, and clarity really lie. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't exist in, in, a, in the realm of a being becoming, of holding on to, of chasing after. Of, uh, it's it's this, this wonderful ease and uh, that, that sense of, of uh, uh, that, that re releasing the burden um, and relinquishment, and it's, it's a uh, you know, an aspect of this. We can be doing that with each in breath, with each in out breath, and to uh, and it's also I mean as the the sutta says, it's training. Say training thus, or one trains thus. This is a training. Um, and, you know, at first it's little baby steps of just training to, okay, oh, let, letting go, letting go a little, uh, getting a feel for what that, 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 that sense of, uh, yeah, of dispassion, of non-arising, of, of relinquishment is. And, and then turning it back on all the other elements of of the the uh, uh, mindfulness of the body as one breathes in, as one breathes out, mindfulness of feeling and perception yeah. as one breathes in, as one breathes mindfulness of the the mind itself uh, is the mind. Say, is it contracted? Is it expansive? Is it, what's its content? What's its mood? Uh, can it be seen for what it is? And of course it can. Uh, it says we have to train ourselves to reflect in that way, turn our attention in that way. So anyway, those are some reflections that have come up around mindfulness and breathing. I'll offer it for witnessing contemplation.